Notre Dame history now in his 20th season. Jeffrey Anderson will throw the ball in the air to get this one started between John Mooney and Garrison Brooks and Brooks won the tip for the Tar Heels and they're very quickly on the board on the shot by Christian Keeling Anthony runs the show Keeling playing his best basketball of the season the last four games with Black Brooks and Baycott Brooks been bothered by an injured eye corneal abrasion Penis Hub, the point guard for Notre Dame with Gibbs more than a thousand point score Rex Bluger does it all Mooney a double double machine and Juwan Durham one of the best shot blockers in the ACC the lineups brought to you by T. Rowe Price and there's Mooney with the rebound Sean it's really interesting to me that Mike Bray during the game with eight or ten minutes ago was already talking about the next game and that's a well that's a veteran coach rolling the dice a little bit with his guys making them understand we're going to flush this one out of our system that game on Monday night is huge Juwan Durham the bucket Mooney scored the first basket for the Irish who've lost seven in a row head to head against North Carolina including that season opener in Chapel Hill Leaky Black that's a three for North Carolina the worst three point shooting team in the ACC this year and on pace to be the worst in school history they are just under 29 percent you see Notre Dame not afraid to double the post because of those numbers you just talked about North Carolina if they can get six seven three point shots in this ball game that is huge and they were terrific from beyond the arc in that opener 10 out of 20 you saw on the panel Jawan Durham the transfer from Connecticut missed a short putback and Armando Baycott pulled it down for the heels see Fluger starting on Cole Anthony because he's bigger more experienced but Cole Anthony is lethal Sean in transition the middle part of the floor this dude thrives in Rex Pfluger with Leaky Black coming out to guard him. Nice cut to the basket. And a hoop for Prentice Hunt, sophomore point guard out of Upper Marlboro, Maryland. We've talked a lot about North Carolina's offensive issues this year. They give up a lot of easy baskets on the defensive end. It costs them against Virginia on a very simple rotation that Roy Williams does every day for 17 years out of a shell drill in practice. Healing long and Garrison Brooks there for the offensive rebound. I mentioned seven straight wins for the Tar Heels against the Irish. Mike Brace said that's been one of the problems. North Carolina so good on the offensive glass year after year, and Notre Dame hasn't always done a good job combating that. Three out of the corner wouldn't go for TJ Gibbs. North Carolina, they have not ran the floor this year like typical Tar Heel teams. The speed at all five positions not committed. They don't get the transition baskets because of it. Another reason why they struggle offensively and Roy Williams has tried to push all the buttons on talking to us today about it. Use all the golf clubs in my back. Mm -hmm. And all I can do is just keep swinging. Shocking that they are in last place right now in ACC at three and eleven. Last time they were under 500 this deep in the season 0102 before Roy Williams came back as the head coach and they wound up 8 and 20 that year 4 and 12 in conference play excellent execution of the lob from out of bounds and Garrison Brooks the bucket just too easy to break down you don't handle the back screen action and Cole Anthony a terrific passer as that baseline out of bounds trigger got by the way that losing season in 0102 is the only losing season for North Carolina since 61 62 when they went eight and nine in Dean Smith's first season as head coach of Chapel Hill nifty move by John Mooney certainly a contender for the ACC player of the year averaging better than 16 points and he's second in the nation in rebounding at 12.8 well, there is not a more undervalued player in all of college basketball than John Mooney to not be on that midseason uh, player of the year list top 25 players in the country something ain't right with whoever's making that list up <laughs> Anthony a miss rebounded by Leaky Black then Keeling short and here's Mike Bray's biggest nightmare North Carolina going to work at the offensive glass again 
against his team, and it ends up with a bucket from Garrison Brooks. Yeah, North Carolina is not going to beat you on their first shot. They're going to beat you on that second and third shot. And Notre Dame is going to play some zone tonight. They're going to be playing that man-to-man. -man. They better have a hit first mentality every single time Carolina will punish them on the glass if not Rooney senior out of Orlando Florida really emerged the last two years guy steadily improved during his time here in South Bend Cole Anthony fouled and he'll be at the line after immediate timeout well you talked about John Mooney when we come back Jimmy will tell us just how good this season has been. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball presented by Boost Mobile. Step up with Boost Mobile, get a super reliable, super fast network. <laughs> rebounder and a, a better talent than what we give him credit for. You go back to the fact that he's the only player in Division One right now averaging plus 16 points and plus 12 rebounds. The last two guys to do it, the only other two guys to do it, Tim Duncan and Blake Griffin. Mm -hmm. When you're in a conversation or when you're in a sentence with those two names, that tells you the special player that Mike Gray has. And he's done it basically, Sean, in two years. He didn't play his first two years much. This kid is a handful when that ball's on the glass. Two for two from the line for Cole Anthony. Tennis Hub committed to Notre Dame foul his first right before the media timeout. Right off the bench and firing right away, Nate Lasheski. This shot missed, but there's a foul against Carolina on the follow up action. And it's on Garrison Brooks, his first. That rebounding number for Notre Dame is concerned. North Carolina's missed six shots in this game, they've gotten four of them back. And you know, Mike Bray in that last timeout talked about hit finding at basketball and if they do not do it North Carolina I'm telling you they will chew you up on that glass Dane Goodwin also on the floor for Notre Dame number 23 Lashesky strong drive fouled and he'll shoot a pair Super Tuesday it's a doubleheader tomorrow night on ESPN and the ESPN app Purdue Wisconsin in a Big Ten battle Teams that look to be in pretty good shape right now. Jimmy, you want to stay off the bubble at 7 o'clock. And then Coach Cal and his 10th ranked Kentucky Wildcats in Baton Rouge to take on LSU, which just fell out of the top 25 in the poll out today. They caught the foul, his first. You know, the Big Ten is interesting to me. I was on the radio earlier today with Dan Dockett, who covers the Big Ten more than anyone, and I asked him the question. I know the Big Ten is going to get 10, 11 teams in. Is there a national champion out of the Big Ten? And I agree with his answer. I don't think there is. A lot of really good teams. I don't think there's a national champion out of the Big Ten. And I think that it's been since 2000 that that league produced a national champion is kind of confusing. Do you think there's a national champion out of this ACC? Absolutely. I, I think Duke is every, every bit built to do it all. They carry kid as a handful. They shoot the ball well. This year, there's probably 15, 20 teams this late in the season, Sean, that we can say can get to the Final Four. There's probably 10 or 12 that can win it. Duke is absolutely in that group of 10 or 12. Until this past week, I think a lot of people would have said Louisville was the best team in the mm -hmm. ACC. They dropped two games, fell out of the top 10 down to number 11, fell out of first place in the conference. Mooney has always had that interesting release, kind of a little hitch. Yeah, he shoots it almost on the way down, and 25%, I believe, in ACC play, and such a ferocious rebounder, has high skill level, but he's got to be able to knock that perimeter shot down from distance if he has any chance to play at the next level. Garrison Brooks, no. Mooney has his third rebound already. Notre Dame 0 for 3 from beyond the arc, down by 3 with under 14 to go in the first half. And now they've connected. From distance, Prentice Hub. No hesitation by Hub. A scoring point guard, a perimeter point guard. Doesn't get to the foul line, doesn't play inside the three point line. Comes off screens as a shooting point. The only really Mooney's taken more shots on their team than Prentice Hub. Leaky Black, wide left and snatched by Lashesky. Sophomore from Jupiter, Florida. Fellow sophomore Hub, as we just said, not reluctant to shoot. Not a pass first 
point guard. Good job by Notre Dame early in the game to keep Cole Anthony on the side when he has it on the offensive end. They're icing him, they're downing him, not letting Cole Anthony turn the corner and get to the paint. Meanwhile, Brooks powered inside working on Leshesky. Six points for Brooks coming off an excellent game against Virginia on Saturday. He had a game high 20. There's a three for TJ Gibbs. Good high stack action by Notre Dame with shooters in the corner. Putting Cole Anthony in ball screen defensive coverage. Big caught one and one on Mooney. And he missed the shot. Leshesky the rebound. Now yesterday in a five minute scrimmage with Notre Dame, I bet Mike Gray said, keep the ball moving 20 times. And the ball is not hot right now. A lot of over dribbling by the guards. Move that ball, make North Carolina work. Chesky missed a three. It's an eight to two run for Notre Dame right now to give them the lead. Anthony, an air ball. Well, the ball usually moves with Notre Dame year in and year out among the top teams in the country in assists and assist to turnover ratio. They don't foul. That's really been the formula for success for Mike Bray in his 20 years at Notre Dame. Mooney will get a brief breather. There'll be immediate timeout on the next stoppage under the 12 minute mark. And Sean, you think about it, if you're North Carolina tonight, you're not going to get points from the free throw line at the normal rate that you do. You're not going to get points in transition because Notre Dame doesn't turn it over. North Carolina is going to have to be very good in their half court offense. Hub on the bench now. So Gibbs and Fluger will trigger the offense. Leshesky fouled on the drive as he tried to go past Justin Pierce. Called for his first foul. Take yourself to the islands with Zaxby's Caribbean Jerk Boneless Wings with the tropical blend of mango, habanero, and exotic. Kansas can't afford to look ahead to their big showdown with Baylor and Waco on Saturday. Here's tonight's Wendy's Wooden Watch. A couple of outstanding Kansas Jayhawks, among those still in the running for the National Player of the Year Award. Those two kids are terrific. Marcus Garrett has kind of changed Kansas in terms of defensively the last four games. I think he's averaging four steals a game. I mentioned it earlier. Tre tremendous players on the, the wooden watch right now. How John Mooney is not on that list kind of bothers me because it seems like we get bored with the basics. And one of the basics in basketball is rebounding the dadgum ball. And this kid does it at a higher level than anyone else out there from a major conference. And everything's with two hands. Everything's with two hands. By the way, as Keelan committed the foul on the first free throw, good by Durham. We do not allow dad gum on Big Monday. I know you're a newcomer <laughs> to Big Monday. Allison, what do you have for us? Hey, it was in uh, the Notre Dame Hunnel. Mike Bray field. Feels like his team found a better defensive rhythm as the game went on. He said, we've got five of your last six stops. They've been limiting North Carolina to jump hooks. Offensively, still trying to find that rhythm. They got to keep cutting, keep attacking. They were standing a little bit too much. They got to keep moving and keep the ball moving. Cole Anthony well guarded by Fluger. Justin Pierce. Walker Miller's in the game. Number 22. He goes after on the offensive glass, winds up with the ball. He doesn't play much, but he's in early tonight. Brandon Robinson back in. What a boost it is for North Carolina. They've played the last four games without him. And they miss his outside shooting. He's really the only consistent three-point shot maker other than Anthony and Juwan Durham doing some excellent work early on here tonight he is six yeah he's playing through contact and normally that's not what he does he's he's not heavy on those collision plays around the rim coming off a big game at Duke North, Notre Dame continues to really commit to to any ball screen that Cole Anthony tries to work off of putting Cole Anthony in the crowd Dane Goodwin Nate Leshesky, Rex Fluger, now Juwan Durham. As usual, the ball moves. All five Notre Dame players touch it on this possession. Goodwin missed the jumper, and then Durham called for a foul. Talk about Juwan Durham playing through a hit, playing through the blast, and the, there's just a little bit of contact right there, but normally those kind of plays throw him off balance and get him out of rhythm. But Durham right now, the length. Finishing high above North Carolina defensively. As you said, he was one of the 
few bright spots. Mike Bray said our big men played well at Duke, but the guards kind of got eaten up by the Duke guards. Most lopsided loss for Coach Bray in his 20 years here at Notre Dame. Baycott makes it six straight misses for North Carolina, down by five. It was a 94-60 loss in Durham. End of a tough road trip. You don't op you often in the ACC have this kind of a schedule. Three road games in seven days against Clemson, Virginia, and Duke. The loss to Virginia really a heartbreaker after a very exciting come from behind win fueled by Rex Pfluger's 18 points. Well, if you're Notre Dame, just keep your defense squeezed, keep it tight, force North Carolina to, to shoot jump shots. They've not proven they can do it all year. Find the ball on the other side of the floor in transition. Good Guard things will happen. More than three minutes without scoring now. Fluger teed up a three, didn't make it. Durham had good inside position, but couldn't snatch the rebound for the Irish. More than midway through the first half now. Notre Dame, North Carolina does not have a guy that can just blow by and get a paint touch, create a closeout for someone else. Cole Anthony's a guy that can do it. He's on the bench. If you're Notre Dame right now, defend the drive, challenge the shots, clean up the mix. There you go. Andrew Playtech, that shot, he has really struggled all year from three-point land. 20% for the season. Now three for his last 26. On the game is so hard, man. As a player and as a coach, if you miss open shots, and North Carolina's probably missed more open shots than anyone in the ACC. The game is really hard. Nate Lashesky, the bucket. 8 nothing run. You know, last year was very tough for Notre Dame. 14 and 19. They finished last in the conference, 3 and 15. I think a lot of people at the end of the season, Jimmy, wondered how good that highly touted freshman class really was. Yep. But I think Mike Bray feels a lot better now about guys like Goodwin and Lashesky and Hub with the way those sophomores have played this year. Keeling ends the long drought for yeah. the Heels. And he's got a good one setting out. Cormac Ryan, the transfer from uh, Stanford is tremendous. He will be a great addition to Notre Dame next year to join that class. There you go, find the back side of the play. Goodwin followed his own miss and missed the follow-up shot. And a good one has a fight and a spirit about him that you love. Baycott. And he traveled, went spinning, and lost his balance. Timeout was 7.50 to go in the first. 2018, but this year, both teams under 500. So when Roy Williams saw Muffet McGraw moved to tears in an emotional loss to the NC State during her press conference, he felt compelled to reach out and just let her know that he knew what she was going through. Today, Muffet came to shoot around, got a picture with Roy Williams that she tweeted here saying, support group meeting of former champions on handling the adversity of this season. Yo, Steve Kerr, we're holding a spot for you. Two coaches that have experienced a tremendous amount of winning with difficult seasons leaning on one another. Beautiful execution by Notre Dame. Mooney the finish off the perfect feed from Rex Fluger. And Mooney got his fingers on what would have been another rebound. Couldn't take it in. Baycott kept it alive. And Durham the block shot. Sean Roy and I talked about it today. If, if you're not careful as a head coach when it's not going your way, man, you can lose the joy in your heart. I know he and Muffet had had some really close conversations about not letting that happen because as a coach, man, you take it so personal for your kids. And it's a, boy, it's, it is a struggle. But just, just be honest about it. Besides Cole Anthony and Garrison Brooks, no one else on this North Carolina team would be in that eight or nine man rotation on any normal North Carolina team. The talent is not there this year. Garrison Brooks, the last bucket for North Carolina, back on offense, down by four with six and a half to go in the half. Will Anthony, three pops out. More great work on the offensive glass. Brooks got it back. Anthony fed Baycock. And Mooney the rebound. Well, both Roy Williams and Muffet McGraw early this season had very emotional press conferences after games where they both talked about feeling like they weren't doing enough to help their team win when they really needed to do more to help their teams win. Rex Fluger buries a three. Well, Sean, they, they both won at such a high level. It's, it has nothing to do with, with them and how it's impacting them other than 
They care so much for their kids. And you love your kids and you want what's best for them. And when you feel like you can't give them or get them kick-started or push the right button, come up with a solution, man, it just it just eats at you. Now, I know it has Coach Williams this year, and uh, we had a really good conversation, though, about not losing the joy in your heart because, man, it can happen quickly. And this is still one of the most competitive guys, to me, in all of college ball. Mm -hmm. We've had two five-game losing streaks this season. They're trying to end this five-game losing streak. Rex Fluger, strong to the bucket. Of course, he's coming back this year from ACL surgery. Early last season, it cost him most of the year. He's a grad student now working on his MBA. Good job by Notre Dame to lift their offense and just take away the help on the last possession. And I think I said Rex Fluger's Dane Goodwin. Just these blondish people all look the same when you have no hair. <laughs> how, how, how good of a young man is Rex Fluger, by He's the way? The said his name. There's, there's none better in college ball. That, that guy gets it now at every level. Silga, we're trying to give him baskets he didn't make. <laughs> Lashewski, the miss. Better handle him right here now. Good job of making him see three sets of eyes in transition, talking about Notre Dame's defense. Justin Pierce, another shooter, did a little bit of a slump lately. Down to 25% for the year from three. North Carolina shooting 30% from the floor in this half. Leaky Black unlucky there as that one popped out into the hands of T.J. Gibbs, the senior from Scotch Plains, New Jersey. It's really amazing to me how many times Cole Anthony still gets in the paint because it is a crowded, crowded floor for North Carolina offensively. No one, no one has gravity and ability to make a gap happen for Cole Anthony to penetrate. That's why when I look at this kid at the next level, I did the Lakers and the Nuggets last Wednesday and just saw how open the floor is, how much spacing there is to work with. That's why I love this kid in the draft. To me, it'd be very hard to pass him over if you're in need of a point guard. Not a very strong draft. No. Upcoming. Now, he made a play in the last ball game where he got hurt. You see the headband tonight covering up where the head was glued back together. It kind of told me a lot, and if, if you're a scout, you want to live in the weeds and find that one play that maybe someone else overlooked. I think that was it. To take that hit and come right back in the game and get right back in the fight told me a lot about Cole Anthony and how he's white. Pierce leaned in on Goodwin, did not score. down low too strong for Justin Pierce along the baseline that was as long and as slow of a post feed pass as I've seen in a long time and North Carolina still wasn't there to put Mooney in a strong enough crowd eight points for Mooney Brandon Robinson gets the friendly bounce John we're actually tracking the, the number of seconds that John Mooney actually has the ball in his hands during the period of a basketball game and right now, it's not even a, a, a full minute that he's had it. And all the things that you would do as a player when you don't have the ball, man, it's so important. Mooney again. Looks like he's on his way to yet another double-double. And this is the largest lead of the game for either team. Notre Dame by nine. Robinson. He's been in and out of the lineup with injuries this season. We were here this morning when he told Roy Williams during their walkthrough, I am ready to go, and that was music to the ears of the Hall of Fame coach. Mooney looked like he might lose it in the lane, kept it alive, teed up the three for Gibbs. Good work by Goodwin. And North Carolina was out of bounds when it was in possession of ball to be Notre Dame ball after the timeout. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball brought to you by Wendy's. Try a big bacon classic today. Sir, you cannot park there. What? Why? It's reserved for Chris Paul. Barb, tell me what you're not seeing. Uh, my name's not Barb. You're not Chris Paul. Stop it, Nancy. Woo! That's not my name. Uh, 
Yeah. See some ID? This is my ID. Need a tow truck on level one? Oh, it's Jake from State Farm. So here's the deal. There's no replacing the real Chris Paul, just like there's no replacing State Farm. Molly, who took my spot? Oh, just some guy. We're taking care of it. OK. If you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Hey, America. Come in for a $20 feast. Come to TGI Fridays today for two apps, two entrees, and two desserts, all starting at only $20. Come Time report coming your way in a matter of minutes. We'll take a closer look at two teams going in opposite directions, Duke and Louisville. What's working for the Irish right now, Fonz? They found a hot guy in John Mooney and continue to feed him, Seth. You know how much I love feeding I know, the hot guy. to the big guy. Hey, Jimmy <laughs> Dykes, I got a question for you. Did you ever think you'd see the day that Carolina is 352nd in points per play in transition? It blows my mind! <laughs> Seth, it blows, it blows my mind, too. And it goes back to a, a, a talent deficit right now. Injuries, rotation not being steady. And look at John Mooney. 13 minutes and 30 seconds that he's been on the floor. He's only had the ball, Sean, 31 seconds. That tells you the importance of what do you do without the basketball as a player. Because that's a, that's a great stat right there for us to keep following. And for all players to understand, man, 95 percent of the game you don't have the leather in your hands do something else that helps us win old anthony got north carolina back within four We're down to a minute and a half to go to rejoin kevin lafonso and seth at the halftime report good work by brooks took it away from mooney keeling blocked by goodwin and batted out of bounds by lasheski a turnover just a moment ago by Mooney near midcourt is the first Notre Dame turnover of the game. We talked earlier about that's the formula. Don't foul, don't turn it over. They've committed three fouls and turned it over once. They lead the nation fewest fouls per game, just 12.4. Oklahoma second, 13 fouls per game. The Irish lead the country and assist the turnover ratio at 1.7. There's their second foul. Or fourth foul, rather. It's by Lasheski. His first. And it'll be a shooting opportunity. Our Friday night NBA doubleheader starts in Oklahoma City. The Nuggets taking on Chris Paul in the Thunder at eight. Then Zion and the Pelicans battle the Blazers. Coverage starts with NBA countdown at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. There's a timeout. It's a 30 second timeout, so we'll be back in 30 seconds. Look at the new sled on you. Yeah, I don't know. I like it. I think, I mean, I know nothing about sleds. And then I'm just buying one? Like, how am I supposed to know what a sled costs? Well, what did you pay? Seven pelts? No. Ah, so high? <laughs> Shimmy used Auto Trader. It's the only one with Kelly Blue Book. See the little ribbon? Let's you know the price is good. What a time to be alive! <laughs> Sean McDonough, Jimmy Dykes, Allison Williams, Big Monday, presented by Boost Mobile. Minute 14 to go in the first half. Notre Dame team trying to string wins together to enhance their NCAA tournament resume. They've been out. Last two years after making the NCAA 12 times in Mike Gray's first 17 seasons. Four teams right now look to be in really good shape out of the ACC. And we'll break out my ACC version of the Jet after a while. I'm going to let Allison Williams be the flight attendant and throw teams off if she wants to. But what a down year in terms of the numbers, just the pure numbers that this league could put in. Dane Goodwin a three, and now Notre Dame takes the ball away at the defensive end. Prentice Hub catch and shoot. And Goodwin over the back of Christian Keeling. Called for his first foul. Goodwin from Columbus area, Upper Arlington High School, where he's the all-time leading scorer. Son of a terrific coach, his dad, Damon, who played at Dayton in the 80s, has been the uh, head coach at Capital University, a D3 school, for, uh, since the mid-90s, and has won more than 400 games there. Brooks faces up and scores. He's been their only real low-post scoring threat over the last couple of years. 
North Carolina held to 31 points. Notre Dame doing a terrific job of keeping Cole Anthony out of the game offensively. They're sending two to any ball screen that he's in. They're off the, on the sidelines. They're keeping him pinned to the side. They've done a remarkable job in transition defense on him. Shot clock is off. Hub drove a little earlier than they might have liked. They've left plenty of time. Ah. Keeling got blasted from behind by Fluger. Don't know if it was a two or a three. And they're going to rule it a two point try, and it'll be two shots of the line for Keeling. It's clearly inside the arc. Only the fifth team foul, correct, by Notre Dame in this half. Number six now, six. that was the sixth. That's just who they are, though. They just, Mike Bray demands it. And that well, we jinxed them a minute ago. It was three, and all of a sudden they, they boom. picked up three very quick ones. In a normal practice, Mike Bray will end the practice playing a lot of three on three, moving the ball, but all designed to make sure you don't foul. And you show your hands, and Luger just making a hustle play, trying to run stride by side with Robinson, and just really kind of a blind foul that happened with 1.1 to go. And I think Hub's early shot there was not what Mike Bray was looking for. They did take a quick look at the monitor, make sure it was a two. And Keeling makes the first. He's now made nine in a row after he started the season. Seven for 14. Every aspect of his game has become better as he's become more comfortable in his first year in Chapel Hill as a grad transfer from Charleston Southern, where he was a prolific scorer in three years there, scored 1,666 points, most in a three year stretch by any player in the history of that program. Wait, I'm not sure that ball was touched. Jeffrey Anderson now gesturing it was deflected. And therefore, it was right to start the clock and end the half. Notre Dame went by nine with 2.40 to go. North Carolina, nine to three to close the half. It's a three point game. Here's Allison with Mike Bray. Thank you, Sean. Coach Bray, you talked about guarding Cole Anthony before your last game even finished. What have you guys done well against him? You know, I think our big guys have helped push him out a little bit. Um, and we've overplayed him and not let him get it back. You know, we got to do the same in the second half. We eventually started rebounding a little better. That helped us. I know the boards were important for you. What will be your number one message to your guys at the half? You know, can we continue to rebound? And our defense has been fabulous. I love our D. Could we get some transition stuff and some easy buckets against them off of a one and done? Got it. Thanks, Mike. At the half, Coach Bray's team up by threes. We send you back to the studio now. Here's the halftime report. Sean, Jimmy, Allison, thank you. Welcome to the Jeep Halftime Report. Kevin Nagani in studio alongside LaFonso Ellis as well as Seth Greenberg here. We're going to break down two teams, um, some good and some bad, and right now some concern there in Louisville. But first, Duke, a team that beat Notre Dame by 34 points on Why Saturday. Why you got to bring that up? Sorry. Uh, it was their last game. Uh, they have won seven straight, and that is those Dukies. And when you take a look at this team, they're moving up in the rankings of late. The new one just came out. Top four stayed the same, Fonz. As you see, San Diego State's still undefeated. Dayton now in that fifth spot, but there is Duke moving from seven to six. They're rolling. What has Coach K done so well of late with this squad? The other big thing is, look, they're an elite defensive team. They can pressure on the basketball. They can deny wins. But what he's done best is he's got three main guys, Cassius Stanley, Trey Jones, and Vernon Carey. Those guys are the foundation. Around that, each and every game is like a puzzle. He's fitting guys in spots regarding matchups. And, you know, against Notre Dame, you play Matthew Hurt a little bit more. I'll tell you one thing, Jordan Goldwire's been huge because he gives him another primitive defender, but he's matching minutes in regards to matchups and personnel to his opponent. To me, this is the best job he's done coaching. In You're right. Thanks. Shaving up to be another tight one. For North Carolina, each of these teams has had some frustrating losses at the buzzer, particularly North Carolina. Mooney tips it in off the feed from Rex Fluger. I told you he does everything with two hands, even to catch the ball in traffic and a great set of soft paws by John Mooney. Sean, his eyes are so good finding the ball as a rebounder, tracking the pass on the post up. Watch his paws right here. Just go up and get it in traffic. Steals a guy off, walks him up a little bit. That's a very hard pass to catch with not much room to operate. Very well done. And perhaps uh, almost in danger of being in the lane for too long on that replay. 
Jawan Durham went spinning to the bucket. Tough to tell if the ball slipped out of his hand or if that was just a wild shot. Now Cole Anthony starting the second half with Leaky Black, Armando Baycott, Garrison Brooks, and Christian Keeling. Here's Baycott. Well done, knowing that Durham is a shot blocker. Well, not noted him again. They're so concerned with Cole Anthony. They're sending two to his ball screen action. Cole Anthony extended the play one more dribble and allowed the big to get to the rim. Very well done by Cole Anthony. And as Prentice Hub penetrated, he was fouled. I'm talking about right here, Cole Anthony dragging that ball screen out one more step, which forces Durham to have to recover one or two strides longer. And Baycott's just waiting on the weak side. My favorite stat of the first half. John Mooney played 15 minutes and 41 seconds. You know how much time he actually had the ball in his hands? Well, yes, because I looked at the note in your hand. <laughs> 32 seconds. I was going to say 32 seconds. Yeah, 30, he played 15 minutes and 41 seconds. He had the ball for 32 seconds. Now we're going to track Cole Anthony, who's a little bit higher percentage with the ball in his hands. But it's still going to be an am amazing number how few seconds or minutes you actually have the ball in your hands as a player. Do other things that help you win. Anthony committed his first foul just a moment ago on the defensive end, and then Rex Fluger his first for Notre Dame. Anthony, son of Greg Anthony, fine player at UNLV and in the NBA. Excellent sports broadcaster now. Out of bounds, it'll be Carolina Ball. Speaking of Cole Anthony, the former McDonald's All-American, our All-American spotlight tonight, brought to you by McDonald's. Not only was he an All-American, he was the MVP of last year's McDonald's All-American game. Averaging 19.3 per game. He missed 11 games with a knee injury. Had a meniscus tear cleaned up. Leaky Black unlucky. John Mooney another rebound. His eighth, so he's two away from his 21st double-double in 25 games this season. Leshesky missed the corner. Trying to go back and watch that McDonald's All-American game, and Cole Anthony had a beautiful blend of shooting and passing. The floor was opened up. He was able to play in space. And this kid is just a, a, just a cold-blooded competitor, I, I think. Now, the shot right there starts on the left side of his body, finishes on the right. He's got some work to do, but he loves the hard part of the game. The lifting of the weights, the running, he never wants to come out of a practice. He's got a lot of stuff about him, I think. That was his first three of the night. Anthony has nine points. They come to double Mooney, even a long way from the basket. Cole Anthony is the best defensive rebounding guard in the freshman class I've seen in a long, long time. Shot clock running out. Mooney took a little bump from Brooks. It's an air ball, but he had to shoot it. So North Carolina down by nine late in the first half has a chance for lead here three minutes into the second half Keeling runs down the miss by Cole Anthony Baycott no basket bump before the shot from the last ball game Cole Anthony takes a shot right there across the bridge of his nose at the top of his eye and it was a large cut man they sent him to the locker room with a lot of blood and Three or four minutes later, he comes back out with that gash glued shut. And on the very next possession in the ball game, watch what Cole Anthony does right here. He's guarding the ball, and he levels off the shot. Now watch, man, he's in the fight. And uh, as an as a NBA scout, I was taught early, find the one play within the season that maybe somebody else overlooked. To me, that's the play. To come back in after taking a shot like he did and get right back in the fight tells me a lot about Cole Anthony and his future. Garrison Brooks banks it home and Carolina leads for the first time since it was 15 to 13 with 1245 left in the first half. Coach told Allison, man, our, get, get that ball inside and our bigs have to finish. And keep producing. That's who they are. They are not a jump shooting team. Seven straight for the Tar Heels. Mooney trying to end that. Misses the three. You asked Roy Williams this morning, what kind of a teammate is Cole Anthony? Yep. Brandon Robinson, the miss. He said he's a very good teammate, and he gave an example of when he got hurt before he ran off the court when he was bleeding all over the place. Brooks, another bucket. He said to his teammates, I'll be right back. And he was eager to get back on the floor. He was back very quickly. I guess they don't stitch you up anymore. They told us they glued his uh, cut back together. 
I don't know if they were out of stitches or what. <laughs> Apparently that's a modern medical advance that I am not familiar with. Dad gum glue. Dad gum glue. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Try a big bacon classic today. Even if your credit isn't the best, Aaron's easy, beautiful, affordable. The Zion Express rolls on. So, feel so, feel so good to dance again. In for the hope. This is where he excels. Or the hype. Walk to Williamson and he smashes the rim. Pelicans Blazers Friday on ESPN. Tomorrow night it's a Super Tuesday doubleheader on ESPN and the ESPN app starts in the Big Ten with Purdue and Wisconsin at seven. And Coach Cal, big one in the SEC, is 10th ranked Wildcats at LSU. Kentucky's the best team in that league right now. Those three guards and Nick Richards, they can certainly get to Atlanta, if not more. Old Anthony extends this North Carolina run. Six straight empty trips on the offensive end for the Irish. They've gone scoreless for more than four minutes. I think in the original 13 rules of basketball that Roy Williams read, it said coming out of timeouts two or three times a game, you have to trap and pressure and get a turnover. They are outstanding out at coming out of timeouts. Not so much a hard double team that time, but they turn the heat up on you now on those ATOs. Nikki Black blocked the three point try by Hub with the shot clock running down. Hub had to launch one. Anthony over Fluger, North Carolina pulling away 13 nothing run over the last five minutes. Now he's got a lot of stuff in his game and he could certainly improve his draft stock right now and go from a guy maybe pick fifth up to second or third and again just having to play on a crowded floor and the numbers that he continues to put up he can make hard guarded shots so well. Notre Dame needed that one they get it from Dane Goodwin high arcing three out of the corner. Leaky Black, a little bit of a late whistle there, drew the ire of this crowd here in Notre Dame, Indiana. I'm told it's Notre Dame, Indiana, because they have their own post office. Here? Here, yes. I'm going to mail a letter while I'm here. I don't know what Jimmy's ACC jet is, so we can all look forward to finding out <laughs> when we come back. <laughs> right now is NC State. They're right there on the verge and hung up in security with too many liquids in their bags. Syracuse, Clemson, Notre Dame, you need some help. Help yourself. Look at NC State right now. Duke at NC State this week. Win the game. Come see me. Syracuse at Louisville. Win the game. Come see me. I may upgrade you, but right now that's where you are. Allison, you agree with any of that? The, the only uh, issue I have is with Louisville, only because of the way they played in the last two games. It's not the fact that they lost, it's the way they lost. By 15 to Clemson, you dropped two games against sub-500 teams. Uh, Jordan War has been non-existent. He's one of the best players in the conference. He hasn't done anything. They've lacked that fight and that energy, so I'm putting them back in coach where I usually sit. <laughs> in a middle seat. Leaky Black. North Carolina by nine, its largest lead. Sean, you probably don't know anything about this, but on that jet, you always want to be on the right side of the, of the petition that they, they pull to separate first class from the, the rest of the mm -hmm. folks. I do want to find out, though, what Allison meant. What is she saying Louisville should be? Now, if they're in business, in your model there, does that mean you're at a three seed? Three, four, three, right, four. Yeah, right in there. So and Allison's saying they shouldn't even be that? She's saying bump them back, but just how they looked in the last week. Where, no, I mean. I'm, but, more, but, I'm basing it more on their seat, not their seed. Does that, make, does that matter? So I think like the way that they have played, I think they're a much better team than they've shown in the last yep, But games. for now, put them in a middle seat and make them think yep, about it. Yep, exactly. I, I kind of like he sat Jordan Ward to send a message. Chris Mack did. I'm sending a message. You're going to come back and coach, hang out with me, no <laughs> arm space, and, and see how you like yeah, it. Yeah, don't store your Respond. luggage. You can move. You can move. Cole Anthony in this half has played six minutes. He's had the ball in his hands 42 seconds. Again, just tells you about the game. Garrison Brooks, another hoop. He has 18 points. Wearing those protective goggles three different times. This year, he's been hit in the right eye. Shooting was off in their one-sided loss 
Forest last week against Wake Forest. Uh, he was dealing with some blurred vision. Another much needed bucket. John Mooney as they go to the Notre Dame sideline after Notre Dame timeout, employing the crowd to make some noise. It is very quiet in here, but Mooney and his teammates need to do something about that, get the crowd back into the game. Well, Cole Anthony has been a big part of this North Carolina run in the second half. He touches the games in a lot of areas. And when he's knocking down threes, he can really get some big numbers going. He is so good and so determined and so tough and strong as a transition guard. His ability to make hard shots going either direction to his right or to his left. And the floating game is always there. Sean, what I love about him is I, I, I was asking him after the shoot around today, well, why, just, why did you come back, man? You could have shut it down and just coasted in on your draft status right now. So that's not who I am. And I'm a baller. Right? That, that is my life. And if I got a chance to play with my guys and compete and fight. We still have a lot to play for. And I just, I, I believe in this kid. There's other guys right now towards the top of that draft that I'm not sold on. I like this kid a lot because I think he studies the game. The game's important to him. He touches his teammates, not only physically, but with his voice. He's a leader. And on an NBA floor where the floor is spread, this kid's going to be a handful. North Carolina shooting 67% in this half. And Anthony improves on that percentage with a step back three. Juwan Durham trying to work on the freshman Baycott. Count it. And a chance for three for Jawan Durham. Senior academically, junior eligibility-wise. He'll be back for another season at Notre Dame out of Tampa, Florida. This has not been a clinic on post defense in this game. Boy, too many times post players on both sides have been able to get the ball and their body right in front of the rim. They caught his third foul. Durham, another miss from the free throw line. Brandon Robinson, nice entry pass to Baycott, who sent it back out. There's Anthony again. We've been talking about him a lot, understandably so. I think the thing that impresses me the most, six and a half rebounds per game. Yeah, he's the best rebounding guard in the freshman class by far. And he's listed at 6'3", and I would argue that that's more than a little generous. Leaky Black powered to the bucket. He got fouled. And watch the tough shot ability of Cole Anthony to come off that handoff action and then the step back three from the deep crowded corner. He plays with a lot of confidence. He has terrific confidence in his vision. I know that right eye is almost covered up by the old school headband tonight, but he has unbelievable confidence in what he sees on the floor. I said it back in the Bahamas. He and I sat in the ocean one day for a little chat. I broke the news to him at that point, Sean. I have a hair crush on Cole Anthony, and it has only grown during the year, the hair crush I have towards him. Can you relate, hair crush? Uh, since, since the old college days. So there's great hair, Kobe White. Terrific year last year, one and done at North Carolina, now with the Chicago Bulls. Two great hairstyles by the last two Carolina point guard. Hub, Mooney, still struggling to find the mark from three. Goodwin, good work inside. He was fouled, and that gets us to the timeout. 11.55 to go. Carolina trying to end a five-game losing streak. I was too embarrassed about paying too much for years. When the Tar Heels lose, he does not keep it, will not wear it again. It's one of his several superstitions. He's always got different good luck charms, but he said he's had to get rid of them all this year with their struggles. He said he's holding on to different things from his grandkids to try and find some good mojo. Even went to the grotto here on campus. I said, can't you find some four-leaf clovers even in the winter here? Come on, you're playing the Irish. He laughed. He goes, I have three of them in my wallet. <laughs> he does. He showed them to me today. He's going through some ties this year, by the way. Well. And he's a man of his word, too. We had them on Big Monday at Tallahassee a couple weeks ago. And I complimented him before the game on his tie. I think Wanda probably picks up the ties. Okay. And he said, if we lose tonight, you can have it. So they lost. 
thought it was, probably wasn't the right time to go back right after the <laughs> game and after the time. But when you, you are very tactful, by the way. When we saw him this morning, he, he said, oh, I didn't know you were going to be here. I have that tie in a box. Yeah, yeah. first thing he said to you. Yeah, yeah I, I, I need a little help. He's got a lot on his mind for him to remember that. It's a nice tie there, too. You should have asked him for that one. <laughs> Amp up the collection a little bit. Now I have Digger Phelps mad at me because I wore a, a tie that he thinks is Tar Heel blue tonight. I never pay attention to that stuff. Digger made sure that we knew where he was sitting. Yes. Just in case we wanted to pass it along to the, the camera, camera is. Yes. yes. Good find by Kluger. Hub missed a three. North Carolina up by 11. They were down by nine in the half. 20 point swing over the last 11 minutes plus of game action. We're nearly midway through the second half now. Brooks off the feed from Leaky Black, and they wave it off. I think they got Brooks for, for grabbing the rim with one hand and the ball with the other. And Brooks told Coach, Coach, I did it. No argument from Roy Williams. He just gave the thumbs up, actually, to Jeffrey Anderson. Notre Dame shooting 33% in this half. They led by three at the half, and Rex Kluger. As he tried to turn the corner. It was a moving screen called on Prentice Hub, his second. I think Brooks grabbed it with his left hand right there. Yeah, and then the right hand, and that's a, obviously basket interference. The pass was just a little too high. He had to use that left hand to kind of keep himself balanced in the air. Brandon Robinson for three. Sean is their team leader in three-point field goals made this season, despite the fact that he's missed nine games due to injury. Notre Dame just firing one rock after another. The latest from T.J. Gibbs. I, I sense a real belief still in North Carolina, and it's showing up in how they're playing right now. They're, they're, I, have a, I didn't see any sign of anyone today at any point that said they weren't continue to fight and compete and get better. I think it starts with Cole Anthony. Your vibe affects your tribe. I talked about it Saturday at Kentucky, and this kid's vibe now is as important to his team as anyone in college ball. And you see what he's done for his guys in the second half now, and they're, they're falling right behind his steps. Leaky Black called for the foul for North Carolina. His first. Blocking foul called as Hub went strong to the bucket. And Christian Keeling stood in there, took the hit, got called for the foul. Super Tuesday, it's still tomorrow. It's still a doubleheader on ESPN and the ESPN app. Purdue and Wisconsin enhance their resumes and then to the SEC for Kentucky and LSU from Baton Rouge. Well, that's an LSU team that is Strong on the glass now, like John Mooney is. They got three dudes to just go and get it. And Kentucky better make sure that they pack their big boy britches for that one because LSU will absolutely chew you up on that glass if you're not ready to play. Notre Dame had missed four straight free throws before that one by Hub. You wonder a little bit about fatigue for Notre Dame. Four games in nine days for the Irish. Last three on the road. Mooney's going to come back in. Probably won't go back out over the last 10 minutes. One benefit of getting blown out, if there is such a thing, at Duke on Saturday was Mike Bray got almost all of the starters out with about six minutes to go to rest them up for tonight. Cole Anthony, plenty of time on the shot clock. He launched the three. And a tripping foul is going to be called against Notre Dame. And Sean, those are the shots that concern you if you're projecting Cole Anthony right now. He, he's going to learn, he's going to grow because the game's too important in him. But you're right, there's 18 on the shot clock. You're on the road with a 13 point lead. And North Carolina does not need that shot. He's a 30% three point shooter. The mechanics of his shot need to get straightened out, but he will learn and grow. The game means too much for him to be stuck as a player in any area. Nate Leshevsky called for his third foul. 
Well, Anthony let them know right out of the gate. I mentioned that opening win against Notre Dame, Garrison Brooks, the bucket. And in that game, Anthony took 24 shots, which matched the most any player has ever taken for North Carolina under Roy Williams. And it was in Anthony's first game. Prentice hubbed the layup. Almost as if to say it wasn't a fluke. He threw up 24 more shots in the next game at UNC Wilmington. You know, I had them in Bahamas, North Carolina. They were good down there. They came out there with a two and one record. The field was loaded. And I believed in this North Carolina team. Then the injuries started occurring, and then you see them being exposed. Lack of three point shooting. Garrison Brooks get anything he wants in this game. Anytime he wants to catch it in front of the rim, three or four feet in front of it, he's getting it done. And a chance for a three-point play for Prentice Hub. You have to make Prentice Hub go right. If he goes left, he's going to spin back. He is single-handedly trying to keep Notre Dame in this game. He is a spinner in the lane. You have to know that with your scouting report. And when he gets a piece of the paint, you have to clap tight on him and not allow separation. If you do, he will spin right back into you. North Carolina not there to close off the play. Finishes the three-point play. Keeling's foul his third. Puts North Carolina over the limit. The next Notre Dame foul put the Irish over the limit. But a long way to go. Still more than eight minutes remaining. Here at the Purcell Pavilion at the Joyce Center. North Carolina's trying to screen the inside of that zone. Notre Dame does a good job of getting body on body. TJ Gibbs called for the fouls. He tried to stop the drive by Anthony. Two fouls on Gibbs. John Johnson, my player of the year in the Big 12. He's a blur. Watch him, folks. Back to you guys. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Here in North Carolina leads by 12. And Cole Anthony's trying to add to that lead. He made the front end of a one and one. Seventeen point six assists, and three rebounds for the freshman from New York City. Prentice Hub. That's a two. He was on the line. They'll need to start making some threes. The Irish down by 12 with seven and a half to go. They're six for 26 from three point range tonight. North Carolina's also made six, but they've attempted 10 fewer. Lady Black used the screen from Armando Baycott. Shot clock about to expire. Keeling, a little bit short with that line drive shot. Mooney, his ninth rebound. He's one away from a double double. There's a three for TJ Gibbs to bring the crowd back into it as Notre Dame's back within single digits with seven minutes to go. And Roy Williams talked about it this morning. He said, You go back and look at our losses, and it's just been a play or two, not necessarily not making a shot. Giving up a transition basket, giving up a transition three, not rotating down defensively. Can North Carolina close out the game or are all those losses starting to mentally build up in their minds? In the last 10 games, they've had five losses by three points or less. There's Hub the bucket. It's a 10 to 2 run for the Irish. Leaky Black. Roy Williams called a timeout, right, as Black was sprinting down the middle of the lane. So the crowd's back into it. Excellent crowd here tonight. From where we said it's tough to see the upper reaches because they darken the seats upstairs. But it was snowing very hard here late this afternoon, and most people were probably thinking about whether or not to make the trip into the Joyce Center. 
Does it always snow sideways here? Does it ever just come straight down? It was snowing sideways a little bit today. Sean, you mentioned the run Notre Dame is on, and that's exactly what Mike Gray was telling his guys during the previous timeout. He said, we have a run in us. I know we do. We've got to just continue to look for our shot, try and get to the basket so we can get to the foul line. And Rex Fluger trying to instill some confidence as well. He's telling his guys, just continue to play hard on defense and rebound. And he looked at TJ Gibbs, who just hit that big three, and John Mooney. He said, guys, look for your shots. We know they're going to fall. Well, they've had a very tough schedule. You know, you're looking at Notre Dame trying to make a run here down the stretch to enhance their tournament resume. They have Miami coming here next, a team that's battled injuries. They go to Boston College and Wake Forest. Florida State comes here. You said earlier they really need that one. They've lost 20 in a row to ranked teams. And uh, Virginia Tech is here. So it's conceivable. It is, absolutely. But it is. They need to get this one. You can't lose a game at this point in the season when you're really fighting for your tournament hopes for a team that is 3 and 11 in conference and has lost five in a row for the second time this year. It's interesting I think when you're losing like North Carolina has they play with more confidence and more freedom on, in a, on a road game. They get away from their home crowd and the pressure that's on them in that situation. Good hands by Fluger. He poked it away and then a North Carolina foul. And that is the one and one. Kind of the Irish. An interesting timeout call by Roy Williams. You're on top of it because I thought at worst North Carolina was going to get to the free throw line, and Coach Williams takes the timeout and comes out of it, turns the ball over. Brandon Robinson, the North Carolina foul, his second, the team's eighth. One and one for Hub. Well, he has been good, Prentice Hub, the last five or six minutes. He has 19 in the game, 14 of them here in the second half. He scored 22 in their season opening loss at North Carolina way back on November 6th. And earlier this year, when I did Notre Dame against Indiana and at Maryland, I think his swagger, talking about three in white, was affected by his shot going in. He's grown right now where so much is not dependent on that ball going in. And that's what you want out of your lead guard. North Carolina was up by 15. Now they're down by, they're up by five. This is a one on one foul. Crowd doesn't like the call. Nate Leshesky called for it. And just that transition ball screen that's hard to handle on Cole Anthony because it gets him in the middle part of the floor. And he's so good at splitting any type of a gap. I didn't see a lot of contact. I didn't see a foul there at all from that all. angle. Yeah. It's four fouls on Leshesky, so he goes to the bench. And I talked about this guy's shooting stroke. If you look at him from head on, the ball's going to get starts on the left side of his body, and he finishes on the right side. And I just think that's something that's got to get straightened out. He's a 74% free throw shooter. He had a game earlier this year against Boston College. They went 14 for 14. Tying the North Carolina mark under Roy Williams for the most makes without a miss. Gibbs gets one to spin around and go in. It's a four point game and a long way to go. 5.45 remaining. Crowd thought Anthony shoved down the defender. Leaky Black dumps it off. Christian Keeling, a baseline jumper. Big shot for North Carolina. Reeling a little bit at this point in the game. Goodwin forced his way into traffic out of bounds last touch by the Tar Heels. And if you're North Carolina, how do you give up a transition three in the previous play? You are fighting for your life on the road right now, trying to get some kind of winning momentum going for you over the last three or four weeks. That's offensive. Yes, it is. John Mooney called for his second foul. As he ran over Christian Keeling. You know, Mooney's got a little bit more pop and explosiveness to his game than you realize. And that's the right call. The, the officials officiate the defense. And they officiate the game from the ground up. 
If you have your eyes on Christian Keeling, you saw him moving in a legal defending position, and Mooney initiated the contact. Right. That is the right call. Mike Bray is making the argument that Anthony did the same thing at the other end. He pointed at this end of the court and gave that push-off move. Brandon Robinson. Oh, tough luck. That was about a third of the way down, it seemed. And now a North Carolina foul. Boy, it was uh, such a foul free first half, but as so often happens on Big Monday, the officiating becomes a factor in the second half. And right on cue, here it is again. Keeling called for his fourth foul. You look at Notre Dame defensively right now, they're, they're much more aggressive. They're a hot defensive team for the first time in the game. North Carolina has to be setting strong screens, man. Strong with the ball, own their spot, but they're going to finish off this game. Nate Leshevsky misses the front end of a one and one. He's a 76 and a half percent free throw shooter. He had a bad night from the line. Eight out of 13. Luger got a hand on it. Wound up with Brandon Robinson, who rattles one home. So perhaps. The Tar Heels have survived the storm. The lead back up to nine with four and a half to go. And Robinson, in his return to action, has 11. Yeah, he's the one guy when he shoots it, you think it's going in. The release is always going to have a nice double by Robinson. Amazing career turnaround average. Just more than two points per game prior to this year. 13 a game this year. Another one that spins around and in for T.J. Gibbs. He has 12, all the points on three-point shots. Black thought about a long three. Under four minutes to go. Anthony forced to fade away. Tough shot. Good defense by T.J. Gibbs. Big possession for Notre Dame. Gibbs calling for the ball. He started to heat up from three. That one spun off. Huge miss. That was there because, yeah, he also had a nice driving lane, but decided to fire the three. Carolina went to their empty corner ball screen for Cole Anthony on that last possession. Notre Dame defended it well, forcing a tough shot. Lack has it taken away. Tried to get it to Robinson. And Rex Kluger intercepted. Lashevsky's wide open. Three! And a three-point game with 3.10 to go. A 21 to 9 Notre Dame run. They've ignited this crowd. Brooks. Well guarded by Leshevsky, held his ground. Now a three ball would tie it. They were down by 15 in this half. Hub. Out of the corner, Fluger's three off the front rim. Yeah, very similar to the shot that beat North Carolina by Virginia. Inability to shut off the baseline and rotate down on that back corner. You've mentioned a couple times you wonder about the recent history of its wearing on Carolina. The last four home losses decided by a total of eight points. They're on the road tonight. It's another tight one. Tight one. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Boost Mobile. Step up with Boost Mobile. Get a super reliable, super fast network. Ah, this is painful. Yeah, Allison, back to you guys. All right, thank you. Time for Who's Flipping the Switch brought to you by Boost Mobile. These two teams have taken turns flipping the switch. Momentum shifts back and forth. And Prentice Hub. 20 points in the game, 15 of those here in the second half. Flip the switch brought to you by Boost Mobile. 2.13 to go. It's a one possession game. Garrison Brooks, double team, and threw it away. Another interception by Fluger. Two minutes to go. Leshevsky down the lane. 
And a foul called on Garrison Brooks. He didn't argue, so apparently he did get a piece of Leshesky. Well, North Carolina's transition defense in the second half has been a big concern. Look at Leshevsky when he catches the ball right there. There's not a North Carolina defender within 15 feet of him with 314 to go on the clock. Look at this gap. And that's just lack of not running, sprinting, talking in transition with a purpose. And there's been three of those transition baskets by Notre Dame in the second half, but now has them back to within two points. Garrison Brooks foul his third. Both teams are in the double bonus. It comes down to a free throw shooting contest that would seem to favor Notre Dame. Although they haven't been up to their usual standard tonight. Carolina is the worst free throw shooting team in the ACC. Now North Carolina 7 out of 18 from the three point line. They've shot the ball well for them tonight. Cole Anthony a deep three. With Gibbs the defender not far off. Huge bucket. Tar Heels back by five with 1.32 to go. Prentice Hub, wild shot. Mooney got it back and got fouled, oh, and it goes wow. down hard. He tripped over his teammate, Rex Fluger. It looked like John Mooney's head, the back of his head, hit the court very hard. That's his 10th rebound, so that's a double double tonight for Mooney, his 21st in 25 games this season. And the good news is he's up and seems to be fine. It's just remarkable how hard he plays and again he finds the ball in flight better than anybody in college ball as a rebounder and man that head was so close to pounding the hardwood. This is not the best part of his game under 64 percent 63 point seven from the line for the year. He must have heard you. I think it's still remarkable, Sean. He's the only player in Division One averaging 16 plus points and 12 plus rebounds. Think about that. And Tim Duncan and Blake Griffin were the last two guys to do it. That's the kind of year that this kid's had. A little more arc on that one. One out of two. Notre Dame uh, doesn't win this one. I think they'll rue the free throw shooting as much as anything. North Carolina spreads the court a little bit in this half court set. Yeah, move the ball and let Cole Anthony close out the possession with a ball screen or just let him go one on one. He's calling the ball screen up. It's Baycott and he Got leaned him. into the screen. It's not a wise decision there. It was blatantly obvious. Yeah. And it's his fourth foul. Because I don't think Cole Anthony went too early. And maybe he did, but either way, Baycott has got to come to a jump stop and just be a statue. Man, what a costly turnover for Carolina. Trying to hang on. They were up by 15. We're under a minute to go. Notre Dame's NCAA tournament hopes perhaps hanging in the balance here. Gibbs, tough floater, made it. Two point game. And a timeout called by Mike Bray. Mike Bray has gone at Cole Anthony several times in the second half, putting him in a ball screen. Now he's doing a good job of fighting over it. North Carolina, though, not committing two guys to it and allowing that guard to turn the corner, make a play going downhill. This happened again. Interesting to see how they elect to play it here. North Carolina, as we said, a poor free throw shooting team on pace to be one of the worst in school history, but not tonight. They've hit their last 10 free throws. They've been the better free throw shooting team here tonight. Trying for just their fourth conference win, Jimmy. I still think maybe it's crazy. We talked to a lot of coaches around this conference who say they're too good. Regardless of all the injuries, to be three and eleven in the league. Well, they this are. is a team the Green could go to Greensboro the conference tournament and go a very long. And yeah, absolutely they could. And we talked about the top of the show. This is a game if you're Notre Dame, you're trying to get to maybe fifth in this league. You can't lose the game. You got the last place team on your home floor. You have not played great basketball, but you're within shouting distance right now with 46 seconds to go. If you're Notre Dame right now, man, you've got to get a stop and clean up that miss. Make sure Cole Anthony doesn't do what Cole Anthony can do. Do you play it out here or do you start following? There's 46 seconds to go. You well, to probably would just try to play defense. Yes, you do, because as an assistant coach, you're telling right now, hey, they're shooting the free throw really well tonight, guys. Well, let's don't foul them. We're going to have to play this thing out for a stop. 
you play the percentages during the year, but you also play the percentages within the game. And I think that's what Notre Dame will do. Iowa State and Kansas in the on deck circle. Our Big 12 offering tonight, and then Sports Center with Kenny Main and Michael Eaves. There's the number 66 percent for the season, 310th in the country, last in the ACC. They might have to make a couple of clutch ones to seal the win tonight. Notre Dame does retreat, and Cole Anthony's in no hurry to get North Carolina into its offense. Out there with Keeling, Robinson, Brooks, and Black for Roy Williams. Does he go inside to Garrison Brooks and that maybe at worst get to the free throw strike? And isolate Cole Anthony on the side with an opened up floor. He jacks up a three, way off, battle for it. Leaky Black slammed the ball off the Notre Dame player, Leshesky. And Terry Weimer never really did point, although the Notre Dame players were convinced he was going to say North Carolina ball. They're going to go to the monitor look at it. The crowd's already seen a replay on the overhead screen, and they think yeah, he's out it's of going to be Notre Dame ball. That's what the Irish players were saying, that Vicky Black was out of bounds when he started to fire the ball off Leshesky. Yeah, that right foot right there. He's out of bounds. Yeah, that's going to be Notre Dame's ball. And Paul Anthony settled for that deep three, man, and he had the the floor was opened up on that right side for him to drive hard baseline and force a play. That, that, that's yeah. going to be an easy call to make. Yeah, I don't know why it's taking this long. No, oh. quite frankly, I mean, now there the it is. North Carolina right people would say, well, he wound up out of bounds because Leshevsky might have been shoving him out of bounds, but unfortunately, the officials can't go back and call that after the fact. Uh, cannot call a common foul off of the monitor. So why is this taking so long? I don't know because they've been charged get in and get out. And we, we saw it and there's the right call. Let's play. So how will these two teams play it? Particularly Notre Dame. I would think you go to Mooney, don't you? Absolutely. Your best player? Yeah, absolutely. He's got the ability to get to the free throw stripe, if nothing else. Now he's not terrific there. And if you're North Carolina, you press up, you try to contain that basketball. Hump has been terrific now getting downhill. Of course, there's still the prospect of a three for the win. Mooney was open in the lane. Hub couldn't get it to him. Mooney trying to go to work. Mooney with the left. Tough shot. Fluger a huge rebound. Leshevsky for the lead. Got it! With 1.8 to go! Nate Leshevsky off a huge offensive rebound by Rex Fluger. Leshevsky shooting 29% from three in conference play. Does a good job, though, of getting to the ball side of the play where the rebound occurred, and then Fluger. Leshevsky does a good job of keeping his feet set. Bam. Huge shot for the Irish. And when we spoke with Mike Bray earlier today, he said, I think Leshevsky next year as a junior could kind of have the advancement that John Mooney had as a junior and a senior when he really took big steps forward. He can play inside or outside. That's a huge shot, shot in this season. They put 2.4 on the clock. They added six tenths of a second. And is it going to be more of the same for North Carolina? Another excruciating loss almost at the buzzer this time. Or will they come up with the last second heroics and end this five game losing streak? Well, Coach Williams knows that North Carolina right now has time for a catch and two dribbles with 2.4. Just to put that in perspective, in the last three seasons combined, they had five losses by three points or fewer. This is the most losses they've had in a season by three points or fewer in the Roy Williams era now in its 17th year. And Notre Dame's going to bring full court pressure. North Carolina can run the baseline. Can you get Cole Anthony with the ball going towards the rim? Do you screening them to some type of action? Do you get in on a banana cut? 
You can throw it to Garrison Brooks all the way to the other end and let him make a pass out. That is also an option. Leaky Black plays it in Lashevsky guarding. He wants to throw it a distance down the court. One. Had to get it to Robinson for the win from half court. No! Another excruciating loss in a season of agony for Roy Williams and these Tar Heels. And perhaps a season-saving win for Notre Dame. Trying to make a late season run and give the NCAA Tournament Committee something to think about. They rally from 15 down in the second half. It's the fifth double-digit lead blown by North Carolina this season. And they've now lost six in a row. Mike Bray trying to console Cole Anthony. A 16-point swing, Jimmy, in this game over the final 8-15 in a night filled with dramatic swings back and forth. Yeah, it's a game that Notre Dame could not lose. They could not win the ball game. And to fight back, I go back to the three key transition plays or lack of transition defense by North Carolina in the second half. Leshevsky again gets on the ball side of the play. Fluger comes up with a rebound, makes the pass out, which is a high IQ play because he's in the crowd. Leshevsky, a low percentage shooter in conference play so far, a high percentage shooter to close out the game. He came into the night. There's two for his previous 12 from three-point range. But he made some big buckets tonight. Let's go to Allison Williams. All right, Sean, Mike, I'll start with you. Down 15 in the second half, and I heard you telling your guys, we have a run in us. What keyed the run? You know, I thought we really started defending and helping and flying around. And sometimes when you're down 15, you have nothing to lose and you just fire. And we started firing, and he fired the big one. He did. Nate Lashevsky with the game winner. What was going through your mind when the ball left your hand? Uh, you know, Rex did a great job getting the rebound. Um, he's been doing that all year, kicked it out to me, and, uh, you know, I just shot it with confidence. So. In so many ways, this was a game you guys had to have. How big is this one? No, we, we had to get through this stretch 2-2 two and two after losing to Virginia and Duke. So to be, what are we, 7-8 and eight in the league? We'll take that right now. We need some rest, though. Yeah, Coach mentioned, uh, Nate, that he felt like you guys were getting a little tired there in the second half. What was required to push through? I think, you know, uh, one of the media timeouts, we all came together, so we got to believe. And uh, we did that, and we just fought for each other. So. How big was that shot for you? Uh, amazing. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Words can't describe it. Congrats, he was guys. due. He was due. Uh, coaches are never satisfied. <laughs> and we talk about the contributions of Rex Fluger. You know, Nate alluded to it. Just three points, but six rebounds, five assists, three big steals, and a blocked shot. And this play set up the game-winning heroics by Leshevsky. Terrific start to big Monday. Notre Dame a one-point winner over North Carolina. Sean, Jimmy, Allison, thank you so much. Kansas versus Iowa State coming your way in a matter of minutes. Meanwhile, we got Xavier in the